Uh, my name is Harry Ward. I'm from Baldoyle in Dublin. I've been transplanted almost 13 years and to date the kidney is going great. I've never had a hiccup with the kidney. Um, I was on dialysis for three and a half years, almost before I had got the call for the transplant. Um, I decided fairly early on when I was told that uh, my kidneys had failed. The only the way I found out my kidneys had failed was I had flu-like symptoms for maybe three or four days every two or three months and eventually my GP said oh, we better go and get you checked so after about nine months of having the flu probably seven or eight times as I thought I went into uh, Jervis Street at the time and they discovered uh, I had one kidney that had never functioned from when I was a child I was born with one perfect one and one not functioning but I had never any problems with it so they brought me in and whipped that one out and life went on yeah uh, I had no ill effects or no side effects life was great I met the love of my life Mary married her we don't have two two children and um, life was great and I had just recently before I was uh, diagnosed with kidney failure I'd recently moved house had a big high mortgage and uh, then obviously got the word that I had kidney failure so life took a tumble that day um, but I had decided very early on that uh, kidney disease was going to live with me I wasn't going to live with it and I think I was one of the lucky ones when I was on dialysis I did have bad days but my good days far outweighed the bad days I was caught, collected at quarter past four in the morning for a four hour dialysis session and when I'd be finished it, you know sometimes people said their blood pressure fa- dropped and they had t- they were terrible sickness and all I didn't really experience that I did have days that I was tired but certainly the, the, the good days outweighed it and it didn't really affect me. Um, I, I, while I was on dialysis too, I um, was going home one evening and I got a newspaper and I saw an advertisement in for um, uh, the service of remembrance in Corpus Christi Church, which was my own church as I was growing up. And I thought this was all a bit of a coincidence because I never really buy the paper because I can't read, <laughs> but uh, I read this anyway, and um, I went to the service of remembrance, and when I walked in the door, there was all these people dressed in suits at the time, they had just, the sports team had just come back from Canada, and I was a badminton player at the time, so I spoke to one of the ladies, Anne Smith, who I knew, and she was filling me in on it, and then from the Monday after that, then I contacted uh, the Irish Kidney Association, the Colin White, and I haven't looked back from that either, because I did go to the transplant games, on dialysis and I had a great time and life was good and it was like an extended family um, y- you know you, you meet these people for the first time and you speak about your transplant and then after that it's never really mentioned we all know what we have and it's not it's not mentioned at all it's the fact we're all there together and we're all at the time I wasn't doing it for my donor because I, I didn't have a kidney tran- transplant at the time but then in 2007 when I did get the call that day was surreal uh, the call was surreal because I didn't wasn't really expecting it and I thought this was my life so I was living it as best I could and I had thank God again for my donor that day um, I every day I think of that donor I never days go by that we don't think of him as a family as well and my extended family were all so grateful and I know it's a very hard decision for anyone to make any one family to make on one of the worst days of their lives because they're, they're losing a loved one, yet they're giving another person who's loved by so many a chance of a normal life. It's not a it's not a cure, but it's a much better thing than having to be go on dialysis three times a week. As I said earlier, like you're collected at four o'clock, a quarter past four in the morning. Uh, you get used to it, I suppose, but it's not what you want for yourself. Since the transplant, I have travelled the world. I've gone to Australia, which I probably never would have gone to. I've gone to South Africa, which I probably never would have gone to in the normal run of of my life at the time. We would have gone to Spain and France, maybe in Italy for holidays, but certainly wouldn't have thought of going, you know, that far away. But yeah, life has been great since the, the transplant. Um, uh, I my two two children that they've grown up and they've both bought their own houses. They're making their own lives. Mary and I are home alone now. I have a wonderful granddaughter who we love to bits, Ada. Uh, I didn't think at one stage I'd get to see grandchildren, but I knew life would go on for my family. But I just thought uh, th- this was my life now, and like you know, dialysis was it, and I didn't think we'd have the future we do have. To me, organ donor awareness is a big part of my life now. I 
decided um, fairly early on when I was recovering from my transplant. I think I was six weeks into being transplanted. I'd done um, a diploma in counselling because I wanted to give back from the word go and I wanted to be able to learn to listen because I don't think I ever really knew how to listen. Um, I'd be jumping in with my own story maybe, wouldn't let people finish theirs and I knew that wasn't right. So, And if I felt if I wanted to give back, I had to have a basis for it. So since doing that, I suppose because I'm involved in the transplant uh, team as well, I, I do listen to people and I do hope I give good advice. I wouldn't tell anyone what to do, but I would advise them and um, I also uh, I give the Living Well programme, which is a six week programme of two and a half hours a week. I think everyone should do it, whether you're on dialysis, a transplantation or a carer. It, it's to teach you how to cope with your own situation and teach you how to, when you go to hospital, to, you know, to be able to talk to the doctor, to realise that he's there for you and you're there for him. And don't just take what I said. I would suggest you write down any questions you have before you go. Uh, because it's all important, it's your life and you're the one controlling it.